Right, Sir Godwin's alive. News alert. It's time to go back in time somewhere. But before we do, hop in the fucking TARDIS and take a trip back in time. We need to look at where the storyline is going. Where we are in this current moment and where the arcs are going to converge and form a new storyline. But... I feel it fitting to begin where we need to begin, really, because... We're going to be weaving a tapestry tonight. A tapestry of tributes. And there's only really one tribute that we need to lay first and foremost. And that's to the real queen of the sewer. Now there's been many queens of the sector. We've had the pig clipses. We've had the, uh, what you call her? Eight zeros. We've had the... Any thought that's rode into the Alice, we've had all of them. But all of them pale in comparison to the true Sewer Queen. The one that you might even call the greatest reigning, the fairest monarch, the most benevolent, the most potent, and by far the most glorious. So, as we lay tribute at her shrine tonight, we salute the fall, the demise of the Sewer Queen. The real queen of the sector, folks. Now, real talk. This woman was like beaten black and blue, big tech wife style, by like Turner back in the day. He was forcing her to eat cake because no one wanted his autograph or something. And you know what happened, folks? She rose up. She rose up and became the greatest of all of the sewer queens. She became a success in her own right. She rose above the domestic abuse and all of their shit to become a real success, a genuine talent. It wasn't beaten out of her or anything like this. She was queen of the... Queen of the Kinodrome, but really, queen of the sewer. A role model for all women. Will Big Tech's wife be singing about the Thunderdrome, folks? Will she rise up and say that she's simply the best, better than all the rest? Will she be that private dancer, folks? An inspiration to all women. It's not all about Tina Turner tonight, folks. Although she will weave herself through. Because we've been listening to a lot of Tina Turner. Um, rip. Rip, bitch. I suppose you might say. But. We need to look at where the storylines are. At this current moment in time. And our storylines kind of converge around one person and one person only. And that person... And I'm doing it to this. And that person, folks. Bear with me. And that person, folks. The one person where all of these storylines converge. One person. 
and they've been woven throughout every single show we've ever done. And it all converges around this one person. So, all of our storylines, all of the Kino Dog Day 2007 masterclasses all converge around this one person. Now wait a minute. That's right. The most important player in all of this is Gator's sister. Incredibly relevant, by the way. I felt him kiss between my legs and I gasped. Just that small touch sent waves of pleasure through my body. The touch of his tongue lingered after each stroke. He made sure to apply pressure when he licked me in long strokes. It felt so good. I moaned a breathy moan and noticed his hand had released my wrists. I grabbed Alastor by his antlers and ran my hands through his crimson head. He finally settled on a spot and began to suck my clit. It felt so amazing. I began moaning his name softly as he continued his assault on my womanhood. I grabbed Alastor by the antlers. Gator's sister wanting to get railed by a deer. But, but, what if, <laughs> but, what if it wasn't a deer that Gator's sister was wanting to be railed by? We're asking those existential questions tonight. We're getting into Philosophy 101 tonight. We're considering the biggest issues in our times tonight. What if this crazy ass mentally fucked bitch wasn't intending to get railed by a deer? What if it was in fact another member of the animal kingdom? What? Uh, this is it. This is the question. What's love got to do with it? What a hero, folks. Role model to women everywhere. The sewer queen. We don't need to know the way home. So... We're looking at the question of Gator's sister. Um, this bitch. That wants to get railed by a deer. Or does she? We're asking those questions. We're pondering it. Sort of ruminating in the, in the lounge here. As we consider. We're puffing on our pipes and shit. And that brings my timing exactly to where I need it to be. So, as we consider that question, for your consideration, I think I've got this here. One moment. For your consideration. You know, I figured it was... Uh about time really that we took a little break from talking about Warhammer and Fox's sewer and Zach the Celtic Sky and even what's going on in Ukraine right now to a little bit of an extent and I figure we take a look at Godwinson to see what so we're taking a look at Godwinson see what he's up to see what's going on there yeah 
And you might notice the melodious tones of perhaps the most... I mean, th this might even be the craziest of all of the Jim Walkers. This is the Jim Walker that thinks it's a penguin called Alistair Mycroft. And as a penguin, he's copied all of Jim's mannerisms and vocal inflections, as you'll see in a moment. Um... It has become quite apparent to me recently that I finally reached over 200 subscribers. Whoa! Well, Sky's the limit. Humble man that simply does not care very much for subscribers. I feel like this is a personal achievement for me. And for that, I am truly, truly thankful. I do not know what the future entails for myself or this channel, but make no mistake, regardless of what happens, I'm still going to be pointing and laughing at retards. Laughing at retards on the internet chat. Little butlers chat. Rest of pepperoni chat. So, he doesn't quite know what the future holds. I do. <laughs> so, we've got a penguin. We've got a man that pretends to be a penguin pretending to be Jim. That's the three layers of autism here. Okay, I'm going to introduce a fourth layer. In this one, I'm going to introduce the fourth layer of autism. And the fourth layer of autism is the fact that when the penguin man pretending to be Jim, the ma when the man pretending to be a penguin pretending to be Jim is cutting promos, he's doing it to darkness. So this video isn't actually facilitated with the appropriate thumbnail it needs. Um, and as we're doing... We're asking the existential question of what's love got to do? Someone in chat says this whole show has been written by Tina Turner. Yes, this whole thing has been put together by lyrics from Tina Turner. And I hope you appreciate the craft and showmanship and downright professionalism at play. So, <laughs> so as we ask, what's love got to do with it? As we consider the layers of autism that go into this one. We're now going to do you all a favour and I'm going to furnish you not with a black thumbnail of nothingness, a void of nothingness, of lazy shit. I'm going to show you how the penguin man Mr. Penguin Man, this fellow, I'm going to show you who the Penguin Man is. And what I wanted to ask you is, can you spot the fucking difference? You must try to And here's his avatar. And here's the penguin man. And here's his avatar. So as we play the penguin man's promo, I'm going to furnish you with the man behind the beak. The man behind the beak time. And all of this is relevant to all of the things we just established in the writing. Th the threads previously all tied together. So, if you're wondering, where's this one going? What's this one about? What the fuck's happening here? I'm literally being a master of my craft and tying it all together. So, here we go. I figured it was uh, about time, really, that we took a little break from talking about Warhammer and Fox Azure and 
exact Celtic guy and even what's going on in Ukraine right now to a little bit of an extent. And I figure we take a look at Godwinson, see what he's been up to. What has our special little Englishman been up to? Special? That's right, a lot, actually. Because you see, Cozy.tv, Nick Fuentes' very own streaming site, got itself a brand new streamer. That's right. That's right. That's right. Godwinson stays of making an ass of himself and bitching and moaning on YouTube are at an end. That's right. I'm a success now. Now, he exclusively gets to bitch and moan and make an ass of himself on Cozy.tv. Now, wait a minute. He's moving up in the world. He's a big boy. He's doing big boy things now. <laughs> okay, granted. Chat? He was supposed oh to be boy. a streamer on uh, Cozy.tv a couple months ago. As he said himself, you know, his first big stream on Cozy.tv was going to be the annual Golden Guns. He was going to have an all-star cast panel of Dalton Clotfeather. Feather. And Rosa being his co-host. And he was even going to have Ethan Ralph be his master of ceremonies. But of course, let's make the magic. You know, the 2023 Golden Guns, they did not take place this year. What? Very sad. No! Very, very sad indeed. Oh well. There's always 2024. Maybe. Oh boy. I want to say it was know what think. Halo Reach at the time. If Godwinson's streaming on a oh boy. Cozy TV, yeah. what was he talking about on his inaugural stream? Was he talking about something new? No. Was he talking about something funny? Well, humor is in the eyes of the holder and... If you with? seriously think Godwinson talking about the fact that Gator's sister uh, wrote a fan fiction in which she got fucked in the ass by a deer, if you find that to be comedy. I and grabbed I him by his address. Alistair, I grabbed him by his But, uh... But that's Already not sensitive all. No, 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 no. See, while well, Godwinson was proclaiming that Gator's sister is a massive degenerate for the seventh hundredth time, Godwinson's chat came up with a theory. What's the now, what's I've the seen theory? many a fan theory video with my time the for various video the games. The cozy chat right here books, came up cetera, with a theory. Et cetera. What might it be? But nothing. What might it nothing be? Nothing can compare. The theory. The theory. That Godwinson's chat came up. What with. could it be, ladies Wait and gentlemen? Wait for this one here. What's the theory? Hope you're sitting down. I'm sitting down. Look. Hope you're sitting down. I'm sitting down. Because this is going to be fucking epic, okay? Epic. What is the theory? Some people in Godwinson's chat. Chat. Believe. I'm ready. That the deer... The deer? Whose name is Alistor... The deer whose name is Alistor... A-L-I-S-T-O-R... Is actually... Come on. Yours truly. Yours truly? Oh. What? Wait a minute. What? What? <laughs> you mean s what? Say it isn't so. It wasn't actually a deer. It was a penguin by the name of Alistair Micro. <laughs> what? She grabbed him by his atlas. She ran his hands through his silken hair. The penguin man finally settled on a spot and began to sock her clip. It felt so amazing. 
Gator's sister began moaning his name softly as he continued his assault on her womanhood. But let's explore the theory in greater depth. Let's explore the theory in greater depth, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, chat. The deer. The deer was me, chat. The deer that was fucking the ever living shit out of Gator's sister and her demented fan fiction. She was actually thinking of me. Whoa, At least boy. according to the people in Godwinson's chat there, uh, whether or not Gator's sister actually knows who the fuck I am, uh, is, uh, it's a mystery. This is a weird simp moment for Gator's sister, by the way, but it's I mean, the only just... way Gator's sister would really know who it was is if Gator was, uh, was having a phone call with her one time and he was crying hysterically that I once again hurt his feelings. That's the only way I can potentially see Gator's sister knowing who I am or hell, maybe she's even subscribed to this channel I, and I just don't even know about oh it. Oh boy! I wanna say it was Gator's Halo Reach at the time. shit for years and hasn't even had the balls to make herself well known. Murderbot 5000? Every time I make a video pointing and laughing at Ralph or Godwinson or Warhammer or the Ghost of Niccolo or any of them, maybe she's just sitting there flicking the bean. Flicking the bean. Maybe she's just rubbing the old taco shell. <laughs> me pointing and laughing at mentally disabled people like uh, Will Cato there. Chat? I don't know. I do not know. I know what you're thinking. This is probably bullshit. But I do have the screenshots to back it up. This isn't my fucking imagination. Irrefutable. Irrefutable evidence. So. <laughs> do, do, do you honestly expect me to come up with a story to make up that I was secretly the deer that Gator's sister wanted to fuck? Come on. Come on. But I did post screenshots of the chat. Chat? Question them talking about me potentially being the oh boy. Deer. Question. Link to that. Link to that tweet's going to be in the description below. But, uh, yeah. Looks yeah. like uh, Pants is at <laughs> Has finally yeah. reached his greener passion. The deer was a penguin. Yeah. And obviously he links the tweet in his uh, description below. And we'll investigate, shall we? So it was your fault, chat. And I think what set him off was this. This set the penguin man off. And got him, got his mind racing about thoughts of Wearing antlers and railing Gator's sister. Well, and many have said that bitch got hooved. That bitch got hooved! That bitch got feathered. The reality is. The reality is. That bitch got beaked. That bitch got feathered. Every time I think of you. She always catches her breath. He's miles away. miles away. And I'm wondering why you left. And there's a storm that's raging. 
Alistair began to lick her already sensitive clip. Gator's sister was more sensitive than normal. Had it been the hooker? The penguin man made sure to apply plenty of pressure when he licked her in long strokes. The touch of his tongue lingered after each stroke. It felt so good. I... <laughs> Gator's sister moaned a breathy moan and noticed his hand had released her wrists. She began to grab Alistair by his antlers and he finally settled on a spot and began to suck her clip. And if all is, if all is right, if the timings are all in, Fantastic! <laughs> if the timings are all in, folks. So obviously we were just able to read that, and now we go on to his profile. This is how you do it. This is how it's done. I'm showing you a true masterclass of the Kino Dogme 2007. That's how you do it. In real time. Brutalize the scalp. <laughs> so, from Gator's sister, where all of the storylines have converged, from the penguin man in the deer in Jim. We now can use that as our lily pad to go back to a place that was far better than what we sit in now. This space year 2023 is cock garbage. And I just wish we could go back to a golden year. A truly golden year. And what we're going to do now is we're hopping in the TARDIS. We've established our fixed present. We've established literally a fixed present. And we've said, okay, we've done our job here. We've done the Lord's work right now in the present. So we're not going to feel bad about hopping in the TARDIS and going back to the past. My timings are all in, which is remarkable. So... It's this one, that one, and where are we? One moment. Okay, so we're going back to simply the best year in history. It was simply the greatest of times. It was the best of times. We're going back to the place where the Kino Dogme 2007 originated. We're going all the way back, so join me as we've completely fixed for the present. In this current present moment, we can now hop back to the past, to simply the best moment in internet history. So, And I need to do this, this, and this. So, we're going back now. And all of this ties together, by the way. You might think I'm like a crazy lunatic. 
but this is actually like genuine thought and craft has gone into what you're seeing now. Like genuinely. If the last half hour didn't convince you when we got a guy blocking us in real time over his evisceration, then this might, then this might. So we are in the space year 2007. Oh, and we've having to use the volume booster. Green event today. And this has been something that has been on my mind for years. Well, so obviously we're here in 2007. You might remember this man, an antediluvian king. It cut promos back in the day with Big Al 2K6, um, Acer, Armic 21. Jedi, all of these greats. And you might remember this fellow. As he vent times, some reason I'm not allowed to review movies. So, you know, it's 2007. We've got our Jurassic Park posters on the wall. We got random flags on the wall that indicate our political positions. And we're looking like this. We're back in 2007, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. 2007. Now got around to making this video. There's a reason why I'm making this video today because I've kind of had it. 2007. The year the first Michael Bay Transformers movie came out. That's right. The year the iPhone came out, the year the first Michael Bay Transformers the year movie I came out. Will never forget. It's a year he'll the never year forget. It caused me a lot of pain. It caused him a lot of pain. Yeah, a lot of grief. A lot of grief as well. 2007, tough year. 2007 was the year I decided to write in depth reviews of old movies that I enjoyed. So he's reviewing, he's in the space year 2007, and this is the year that he's decided to write. He wrote the one where the cartoon one, the very first one, the one where Optimus Prime dies. Everybody knows about that. 2007. That's where stories started picking up. And then I was part of a superhero and comic book community on Facebook. Uh, he's part of a comic guy. book and superhero and community on name. Facebook. I know he's probably uh, watching this video because I'm probably sure he's been stalking me for years. Someone's been stalking him for years. Right. Okay. So we are, we're sort of getting little hints here that all isn't as it seems. All might not be as it initially might seem. You might have noticed the little clues, little clues that are bestrewing this, this video from 2007. And perhaps the biggest clue that you might have heard is the man literally predict, is the man literally predict where we're at now. You might notice an ornaments in, in the room that seem to be from the future. You might notice that there are various things that he's saying and hinting at that seem to be from our time. And you wonder what the fuck? This is 2007. Is this a prophet or some shit? Is it Jesus as a neckbeard or some shit? What's going on? What is happening, folks? Well, all will be revealed momentarily. Momentarily. Right. This guy, I wanted to post back in 2007. I decided, hey, I want to go back and watch the original Transformers movie that my friend Mike, that I've known since the MySpace days, told me about that I didn't even know existed. The MySpace? I was curious. I wanted to see what your movie was before I watched the new one. Well, the one that was coming, the first live action movie that was coming out. 
So he sent me a link from YouTube. It was back before uh, YouTube copyright claimed the movie. Where is this going? What's going on? What is going on? Uh, I got the TV seems to be from the future. I thought, well, that is the but it's 2007. Dark, but, but there's a Halo. There's a Halo poster in the back. So damn bad. The one in the group is okay. Halo uh, Infinite. What? About the film. There was this one guy. Anachronistic elements comprised. There was this one guy who had an issue with me talking about movies. I, I don't know why. He had this thing against me in a group. And, um... He went so far as to publicly humiliate people if... who... people didn't agree with him. I was one of the people who was the blunt of his bullshit. Okay. So... Seems awfully strange, that, doesn't it? It almost seems like... 2007 has sort of been distorted in the timeline as we've gone back into it. Sort of like elements from future years and past years have mingled together in 2007. We've corrupted the past with our trip back in time after brutalising the Penguin Man. Where are we now? What's going on? Well, vent time. Some reason I'm not allowed to review movies from Spark Shadow Tiger Gaming is actually from three days ago. A video years in the making. A video years in the making? What? What do you, what, what? How can this be years in the making? Well, let's actually listen again with this in mind and we'll break it down. I need an event today and this has been something that has been on my mind for years. Well, since 2007. And I just now got around to making this video. And there's a reason why I'm making this video today. Because so 16 years later, this is a video that's been brewing for 16 years. I kind of had it. 2007. The year... The first Michael Bay Transformers movie came out. The year I will never forget. The year that cost me a lot of pain and a lot of grief. 2007 was the year I decided to write in-depth reviews of old movies that I enjoy. So 2007, the guy takes a career choice to write m reviews about old movies he'd enjoy. Right. And since 2007, there's been a guy on his nuts because he wrote a bad review about an old Transformers film. And this is a feud that's been taking place over the past... 16 years. This is how it's done, folks. This is how the Antediluvian Kings still duke it up. It never ends. It goes on for 16 years over the pettiest of slights. The reason... <laughs> the reason why you might continue a feud for such a retarded amount of time is inconsequent. It needs to be retarded. It needs to be like the most retarded shit you can imagine. It needs to be over like a fucking video game. Or a Transformers movie. Or a poor take on Sonic 2006. And that is enough 
to get another man to literally stalk and drink your blood for 16 years. That's how the kings used to do it in 2007, and that's how the kings do it now in 2023. I decided to review the classic Transformers movie. You know, the one where the cartoon one, the very first one, the one where Optimus Prime dies. Everybody knows about that. This is where stories start picking up. And I was part of the superhero and comic book community on Facebook. And uh, this guy, I'm not going to say his name. I know he's probably uh, watching this video because I'm kind of... This guy, I wanted to post back in 2007. So you might have missed that detail. But this is to appease a man that's been hanging off this guy's nuts for 16 years and stalking him and making it his life mission to bully this man into suicide because he glossed over reviewing the Michael Bay Transformers movie. And it's a, gr it's a grudge that's finally, and I've been watching it the whole time, but this is a grudge that's finally been settled now in 2023. It's 16 years in the making. And now here we are. We're all older. We're all much fucking older. And there's still that beef to be settled and it's finally coming to an end. So if you're unaware, what might be seem eternal now, I'm reminding you of mortality. That's what I'm doing here. And this is how it weaves back to Tina Turner. This is how it all works. Mortality, even if something might last forever, like Spark Shadow Gaming's feud with a random autist because he'd refused to review the Michael Bay Transformers movie back in the day. Something that I thought would outlive me, quite frankly, the feud between the two men, has finally come to an end. It's mortality. It's Tina Turner dying. It's Coach Red Pill being executed in the street. It's mortality. Mortality. That, that which might seem forever eventually must end. All good things, ladies and gentlemen, must come to an end. Mortality. Germany for years. I'm not gonna say his name. I know he's probably on the community on Facebook. And uh, this guy, I'm not gonna say his name. I know he's probably uh, watching this video because I'm probably sure he's been stalking me for years. This guy, I wanted to post back in 2007. I decided, hey, I want to go back and watch the original Transformers movie that my friend Mike, that I've known since the MySpace days, told me about that I didn't even know existed. I was curious, so I wanted to see what your movie was before I watched the new one. Well, the one that was coming, the first live action movie that was coming out. So, he sent me a link from YouTube. This was back before, This is the uh, oldest of all. All of the looks. This is how it all began. This is like the shooting of Archduke Ferdinand or something. Um, I got done watching the 80s Transformers film, and I thought, wow, that is some really dark but interesting storytelling, and I wanted to talk about this movie so damn bad. The one group was okay with me, uh, talking about the film, there was this one guy. One guy? There was this there was one, just one guy, guy who had an issue, who had an issue talking about movies. With had an, I, I don't know had, why. There was just this one guy who had an issue with him talking about movies. Now bear in mind, for the past 16 years, folks, for the past 16... 16 of our years, all of the, the whole feud has taken place with both men refusing to say the other's name. But they're only known to each other. 
They are literally only known to each other, but they refuse to say each other's names for 16 years, but make continual pointed jabs at each other continuously. as we continue. And that just thing gets me for and um we went so far as to publicly humiliate people if who people didn't agree with. He went so far as to publicly humiliate people if they didn't agree with him. This guy that was on this guy's ass saying, look, man, maybe you should hang up. Maybe, maybe tra review Transformers 2007 before you go back in the past. This guy didn't know any limits. He didn't know when to stop. He knew no half measures. 2007. Mortality. Once this push. I was one of the people who was trying to blame this bullshit because, uh, all because I posted an in-depth review in text. It was a text the review. Group. The guy went out and publicly doxed me. Whoa! Oh my god, over a Transformers review. Literally said, oh, you spoiled this movie. I'm going to spoil your IP address to everybody in this group. Brutal. Ruthless. That tip has been stuck with me for years. Since 2007. It's been hard to let go. It's been hard to let go. So when I see comments of people posting, oh, do not talk about this new movie. Do not talk about this new movie because I haven't seen it or else I will report your ass. But I want I, I want to show you people something, alright? Go off, kid. Look at this. I'm showing Doug Walker. The king of 2007. And it suddenly revealed that we are definitively in the space year 2023. Because the guy, while he might look like he's coming at you from an unregistered hypercam 2, just like in the glory days, he's actually doing it through OBS. Shane Awesome, home of the Nostalgia Critic, and so many other movie reviewers. Alright? Famous for reviewing movies. Well, what's this? What's this? A movie review. A movie review that came out in the modern year. Modern the era. Year. How come nobody is attacking him? How come nobody is attacking Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic, for reviewing a movie that came out yesterday? It's taken... 16 years for this man's vindication. And finally, the time has come. Finally, he can justify his own actions by the actions of Doug Walker, King of 2007. And that's the face of a man that's been served justice. It's been a long wait. It's been a long walk to freedom. But here we are with the Puss and Boost's Last Wish review from Dog Walker. Life has never been this sweet. Look over here. AVGM being wheeled out now. Senator Masker. He was talking about the Super Mario Brothers movie. Nobody attacked him. Nobody attacked him, so why are they attacking him in 2007? The minute if I dared, dared to talk about a movie, oh, sorry about that, but if I dare to talk about a movie in depth like these guys do, granted, these guys, ABGM and the Nostalgia Critic, were the main reasons why I made a YouTube channel. These two guys, who I looked up for, for the, looked up to,
We all did it. We all. It bothers me to no end that it's okay for these two guys. Drink that blood. These two guys. It's okay for these guys that that they can review whatever fucking movie they want, which I'm okay with them. I support these guys through and through for many years. I would consider myself a fan. They're one of the many reasons why I made a YouTube channel back in the day. But the minute I... But the minute I make a review, I'm the spawn of Satan. He's the spawn of Satan. I'm the evil son of a bitch. The evil son of a bitch. How is it fair that those two How is it fair that for 16 years this man's been put on the cross, but Doug Walker and James Roth have been allowed to get away with it and keep getting away with it? This man's whole life was ruined, Dark Ninja style because of a Transformers review that he didn't make. But the AVGN and the Nostalgia Critic went on to live as kings and reign as kings and have the legacy of kings. And here he is. He should have been a king. He should have been a contender, Charlie. He should have been somebody. Their online media outlets can be able to talk about a movie that recently came out. But the minute I do, the minute I do, I get publicly shamed. I get docs. All my private info gets leaked online. You get a sickness mentality. Movies should be enjoyed by all. Not just one group of people. Oh, who's seen this movie? You can't, you can't talk about it till I see it. But I, I get it. I get it. You want people to respect your boundaries. But you're on the internet. A place where the flow of information never stops. New information comes up every day. It boggles my mind. It boggles my mind that for some reason I'm not allowed to talk about things that I enjoy. Tough. Tough. But people that I look up to can't. And nobody says a damn thing to me. It honestly is a fact. And I'm fucking tired of this shit. He's tired of this shit. Now the next video, we can't show you. We can't show you what happened next. But... Rest in peace. Antweiler Elementary. Rest in peace. Class of 2023.